It's time for the Chicago Real Estate Beat here on 1340 WJOL. Here's Ken Hobolt from Hobolt Real Estate, Ray Graylick of Graylick Insurance, Kevin Barry from the Barry Law Group, Tim Yanahan of Caliber Home Loans. This is the Chicago Real Estate Beat on 1340 WJOL. Hold on. Hey, welcome to another edition. As we roll down this unfamiliar Welcome to another edition of Chicago Real Estate Beat brought to you by the accounting firm of DeAndre and Associate. This segment is brought to you by our good friends over at Chicago Title. What's going on, fellas? What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing out there? Good. Hey, along with Timmy Anahan from Caliber Home Loans. Hi, everyone. Ray Graylick from Graylick Insurance. Thanks for listening, everyone. I'm Ken Hobbelt with Hobbelt Real Estate, and we're going to talk a little real estate today. We've got a couple guests coming on later on. Audra Laurie from Caliber Home Loans will be joining us talking about renovation loans. Part of, she's part of Timmy Anahan's team over at Caliber, and they do a great job helping us out. And it's a program that we've used over the years, and we think it's an excellent opportunity for uh, those people that are looking for that type of loan. And then Timmy Kierfin, who actually, fellas, he's responsible for us being here. We had the opportunity to guest host Kierfin Home Inspections. Um, over the past few a few months, and we were a uh, great response from the listeners out here at WJOL. And we wanted to come out and uh, support the community and support the WJOL. So we're, ha- we're happy to be here. Uh, Timmy Kerfin's a good guy. We're, we're happy to be on the show, and uh, thank you, Timmy. Quality work. He does quality work uh, with the inspection guys. Uh, when I see a Timmy Kerfin report come over, I know, uh, you know the property's in good standing order and uh, the customer's being serviced properly. Without a doubt, I couldn't agree with you guys more. Guys, I just want to start out talking a little bit about my properties, and I'll let you guys get I know you guys got some good, interesting stuff that you want to talk about. I want to talk about an investment opportunity that's here in Joliet. We have a two-flat and a four-flat being sold together, fully rented, great return on investment. Both properties together are only $260,000. Put the numbers to paper. It's great. Great opportunity. It's over on Richard Street, 830 and 832 Richard Street. So keep that in mind if you're an investor looking to invest here in the Joliet area. Great opportunity here, too. Also wanted to talk to another. Today, I pretty much can talk all investment opportunities that I have there, too. I've got three more that I want, four more that I want to talk about. Is One is I just listed over the weekend, and we're getting a lot of response on it already. For those, this is attention for all you flippers and all your investors that are out there. I have a three-bedroom, two-bath home in Oak Forest. It's solid. It just needs to be updated, come in top to bottom, uh, fix it up, and, uh, and it's a truly a great investment opportunity on there too. And I know Ray's going to touch on some insurance stuff for, on the commercial side, so I wanted to bring up some commercial properties that I have listed. So I got three of them all together. Um, first one is in uh, Beverly. It's a two-story office building, fully rented to long-term tenants, 449 even. Um, great opportunity, come in. Uh, really, it manages itself. Not a lot of time required to do it. Um, great ROI on that as well, too. Um, the next one I want to talk about is in Lamont. And I know both of you guys have had the opportunity to be out there and take a look at this building with me. It's a mixed-use building, downtown Lamont. Upscale restaurant. has a 2,500-square-foot apartment up top. Fully rented. They just rented out the apartment after they had just got done renovating. It. So it's, it's all ready to go. They either bring out... Bring your restaurant to Lamont or simply be the uh, the landlord. Either way you want to do it. But that's priced at 1.2. So if any of these properties, give us a call, and we'll be happy to uh, check it out. Ray, what do you got as far as the insurance on uh, commercial properties? Well, you know, Ken, uh, keep it in line with uh, your commercial real estate. I got an insurance topic I like to discuss with our listeners. And it, it, it's uh, an article I like to kind of talk a little bit about. Uh, it comes from a company uh, that we're very close with. One of our strategic partners are in, in our agency, Erie Insurance Group. And... Uh, this is an article out of their publication called Erie Insurance Sense, and uh, it talks a little bit about who insures interior improvements at your leased building or office. It's a great article. Uh, I think if anybody leases an office or a building for their business and they make improvements to the space, such as remodeling the interior, it's a pretty good idea to review your business insurance coverage with your insurance agent. Uh, this article goes on to say, generally, if you've made any after-the-fact alterations, it's up to you, not the property owner or landlord, to insure them says, for example, let's say you've leased a space for your beauty salon, retail business, or medical office, and you install new sinks, counters, and shelving. You would need to insure those items. Uh, keep in mind, folks, you know, leases, you know, if you come into a space uh, and there are certain things that are already there, they are probably the improvements of the landlord. Anything you do afterwards is your improvement. 
insurance industry, we call these changes improvements and betterments. Essentially, it means that you're responsible in a leased space for ensuring any alterations you've made, such as maybe the flooring, any light fixtures, say wall coverings, wiring, plumbing, cabinets, shelving, or anything else that's attached to the ceiling, walls, or the floors. Uh, you know, because these improvements might be essential to your business operations, it's important to understand who's responsible for replacing them if they become damaged. If you do not update your business insurance to cover these improvements, you could be underinsured and without the means to fully repair or replace the improvements if a covered loss occurs. So, hey, Ray, let me interrupt for a second. Would that also include if, you know, maybe you've been in the business for, you know, you've been in there for a couple of years and you decide to, like, remodel. If you're, like, we've seen restaurants and bars, you know, they change their concept on there. Would that would apply to them as well? It would absolutely apply to them. They're doing the improvement and betterment, and it's their responsibility to ensure that betterment and improvement. So, you know, fire loss goes through the building. You know, building landlords probably got coverage for the structure, but will not have any coverage for their betterments and improvements inside the property, Ken. And also, just to stay on the restaurant thing, because we did work on that one uh, property in uh, Oak Lawn not too long ago. We were talking about the, the equipment that they brought in, too. They brought all new equipment, new stove, new fryers, new refrigerator, new freezer, and whatnot, too. So that definitely applies to that. That would absolutely apply. But that would kind of cover uh, a little bit more under the business personal property section of that business policy that they would purchase from their insurance company. If anybody's out there looking to review any, uh, you know, business insurance protection or homeowners coverage, you, know, you can please contact me uh, at 773-284-7650 or visit us on the Chicago Land Real Estate Network at www.creb.biz. Timmy, what do you got for us? Good bud? stuff, guys. Hey, uh, Caliber Home Loans, uh, I wanted to share today with uh, our listeners the ultimate home buying experience that uh, Caliber Home Loans has uh, introduced to the marketplace. And what it is, guys, is you could basically apply online, authorize uh, Caliber to verify your income through bank statements, employment, and uh, property details electroni uh, electronically and, and skip the paperwork. Makes it a lot easier, smoother trans uh, transaction, and you can anticipate closing on some of these transactions as little as 10 days because of it. So, uh, you know, a lot of uh, times you have people, you know, trying to scramble for their paperwork to get, you know, bank statements. I can't get all the pages, uh, you know. Underwriters want to see everything, guys. Yeah, Timmy, I couldn't agree with you more. What about when you talk about the new millennials who want to do everything? On, uh, exactly. I was just touching on it. They, they love it. You know, uh, my daughter's age group, she's 25. All those young ones are starting to get get together and uh, start looking at, uh, you know, pot, potential buying. Uh, they love it because uh, it's basically a one-stop shop. You can do it right on your phone. You can do it any time of the day, too. That's any the great thing about day. it. Exactly. So what it does is authorizes... Uh, uh, caliber to go ahead and uh, electronically verify your your information and then go go forward with uh, the process without you know requesting uh, updated bank statements pay stubs we already have all the information up front so it makes it easy in underwriting uh, and, and we actually prefer it yeah. and actually you know that allows the pre-approval to get done a lot better and you and I had a uh, situation earlier this week where uh, it was a multiple offer situation because our buyer was two, there was two offers on the thing. Because our offer was pre-qualified, they actually the, the sellers actually took less money and took our buyer. Correct, and that you know, as I tell everybody, I keep harping on it, week in and week out. Be prepared. The, the customers that are losing out on these contracts when there's multiple all, uh, multiple offers are the ones that are you know a little stagnant on with getting updated paperwork. Hey, I got a raise. Well, I don't have the information. I can't give you that. We're going to make sure that when we give you a pre-approval, that it's it's done properly, and that you don't have any oh what ifs or uh, something comes up and, and, and we can't close on the file for you. So uh, that that would be my initial take on uh, uh, on this ultimate home buying experience because you're you're addressing those issues right up front, and we also uh, coupled that up with uh, the the uh, uh, closings. Uh, so we're doing our ultimate closing as well, and we can do it all. Uh, up front, as far as uh, the paperwork, this customer will sign their paperwork. There are some dis uh, disclosures and, and, and things that need to be signed at the table, but it cuts down on our closings, guys. I mean, you know, typically a, a 45 minute to hour closing, now you're doing them in 15, 20 minutes. Customers and we're, love it. Yeah, absolutely. And, be, and the one thing, the big that I want to talk about Caliber that we've done, I mean, you and I have done numerous deals over the years, but one thing about Caliber, we walk into the closing, the funding's already there. How many times over the years, or going way back, you had to sit for hours? 
hours or days before it got funded. It's the money's there when we get there. That's well, great. I got a two o'clock closing after the show, guys, and uh, I can tell you the funds were sent yesterday. Oh, he yesterday. just doesn't want to buy lunch. He doesn't have no closing <laughs> on there. <laughs> I'll buy lunch after the closing. But uh, yeah, so the funds in in the package was sent yesterday afternoon. Uh, so, you know, we try to make sure we're on top of things at Caliber. If you need anything, please contact us through Cren, uh, www.cren.biz. Uh, you can catch us there. My NML number is 250-247. Hey, Timmy, you touched on, on, on Cren a little bit. Let's talk about the network that we're all members of, too, and they were there, too. Chicagoland Real Estate Network. And like Timmy said, uh, our, our website is cren.biz. One of the things that we we got together to, between Timmy, Ray, Kevin, and myself, we got together. Um, we've been doing business loosely for about twenty years. Um, a couple of years ago, we happened to all be part of a, the same closing, and we went out for for lunch afterwards. And while we were at lunch, we decided we decided let's be a little bit more formal and try and help each other grow our businesses. So we so we have, and it, sort of for the past two years, we have dramatically seen the number of transactions that we all participate in um, grow. And so we decided to take it to the next level. Yeah, and so what we did is uh, we, we got together a group of people. We had a, a gathering and, and a presentation to, you know, introduce what our concept is. And it is like-minded professionals like ourselves that, uh, you know, go above and beyond for our customers. People that we've dealt with in the past that have the good reputations, that really uh, care about doing a good job for their customers and making sure that at the end they could refer somebody. And, you know, I don't have a problem with anybody in our network referring to them as if it was myself working on it. And, you know, we all take our attention uh, to details. And, and, you know, some of the guys on our network and gals are, are just – you know, top notch in, in their fields. You know, uh, in a little bit we have uh, Audrey Ori coming in uh, to discuss our, our, our renovations. Um, you know, and how uh, last week we had Tommy Brennan uh, from All in One come on and discuss how he, you know, the steps of how to do a renovation project. Uh, you know, so we we do cover a, a full gamut of uh, of the real estate needs for our customers absolutely tib you know the chicagoland real estate network is a one-stop resource for the homeowner everything from a to z is covered in terms of you know if somebody's looking for a remodel or repair insurance mortgages you financial know, estate, planners financial planners yeah. it's all there and i think that to best describe the chicagoland real estate network i think i could say it's like a library you don't actually have to know where every book is or what's in it but you do have to know where to find it when you need it and if you just Going on to our website, www.cren.biz, gives you an array of information on the network and the professionals that are in there. All right, great. That's good stuff, guys. So remember, check out cren.biz. Um, for any anybody that's on the show, myself, Timmy, Kevin, Ray, or any, any other of our members, there too. we're going to take a break right now. Thanks to Chicago Title for sponsoring that segment. You're listening to the Chicago Real Estate Beat brought to you by the county firm, of Andrea and Associates. We'll be right back. You're listening to 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk and Sports. Gray Lake Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency representing several companies in auto, home, commercial, and workers' comp insurance. The cornerstone of our agency is our ability to tailor-make policies and provide insurance choices with top-rated insurance companies. The Gray Lake Insurance Agency is your one-stop resource for all of your insurance needs. We put you first and work within your budget. Contact us today at 773-284-7650, graylakeagency.com. The Joliet Will County area has a long history of tornadoes. From Plainfield to Coal City to Crest Hill, we've been through it all. For over 90 years, WJOL has been the area's place to turn for coverage of severe weather. Watches, warnings, the aftermath. Stay connected with the changing weather here in the Joliet area on 1340 WJOL and on our new WJOL app, on our WJOL Facebook page, and on Twitter at WJOL. Carol McAllen with 1340 WJOL's Community Calendar. July 20th is National Lollipop Day, and Handing Hope would appreciate donations for their lollipop tree project. Handing Hope provides healthy lollipop trees to pediatric cancer care centers across the country, including seven in Illinois. For more information or to donate, visit handinghope.org or call 815-690-9095. Just Animals will hold a low-cost pet wellness clinic Friday, July 21st at Rural King in Plano from 3 to 7 p.m. 
and another one on Saturday, July 22nd at Aurora Animal Control, 600 South River Street in Aurora from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information on Just Animals or their low-cost pet wellness clinics, visit www.justanimalshelter.org. That's the community calendar for 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk Sports. Caliber Home Loans Incorporated, NMLS 15622, is an equal housing lender and an Illinois residential mortgage license number MB0004043, 1431 Opus Place, Suite 135, Downers Grove, Illinois 60515. Not all customers will qualify. Other restrictions and limitations apply. This is the Chicago Real Estate Beat on 1340 WJOL. Hold on to me. Hey, welcome back, everybody. The Chicago Real Estate Beat brought to you by the accounting firm of DeAndre and Associates. This segment is brought to you by Caliber Home Loans. And speaking of Caliber Home Loans, we are joined by Audra Iori from Caliber Home Loans, who's going to talk to us about a special program that we got going on. Hey, Audra, how are you? You're real good. Thanks for having me on today. Hey, um, I think, yeah, the topic right now is extremely relevant from what we've seen just in this uh, spring and summer season alone. The pickup and the interest and the need for renovation financing is up there. Hey, that's great. Well, before we jump into that, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about your background? I know you've got extensive in, in the mortgage industry and working with this program as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, sir. So I've been in the business for about 15 years now. Um, strictly residential mortgage lender. Um, I am the licensed and certified uh, renovation loan specialist for uh, the northern part of Illinois, and I specialize a lot in first-time home buyers and uh, down payment assistance. Awesome stuff, Odd. Welcome aboard. Uh, glad you can make it to, to help us out with this segment. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about renovation loans. So can you talk to us uh, what is a renovation loan and maybe why someone would choose this uh, route to go? Sure, sure. So uh, what a renovation loan is, it's basically if you're buying or you're refinancing a home, you're rolling in the cost of the repairs into that loan. So, for example, let's say you were purchasing a home for $150,000 and you wanted to put another fifty grand into it. Your financing is going to be based off of the combination of those two or $200,000. So why would somebody choose to do this? Main reason is going to be cost and stability. I mean, think of it this way. Most home buyers are going to purchase their first home. They're going to go in. They're likely going to spend anywhere between five and $15,000 in the first few years uh, making you know, needed repairs and just cosmetic repairs. And how are they going to do that? They're either going to drain whatever savings that they've had they're going to borrow from mom and dad, or they're going to extend themselves on high-interest credit cards. So this way, you're getting in, you're getting what you want, and you're, you have the stability of what that monthly payment's going to be. That's Hi. awesome. Hi, Audra. Ray Graylick here. Welcome to the show. Hey, Great. How you doing? Welcome to Chicago Good. and Real Estate Beach Show. Hey, listen, I, I know we deal with a lot of these uh, clients, and uh, it's a hot topic, these renovation loans. Uh, one of my questions is, can the customer do the work themselves? Uh, no, there's absolutely no help allowed on these. So the main, uh, one of the main things that the customer needs to keep in mind when they get into it, they need to be able to hire an uh, insured and stable contractor. Uh, specifically, if they're familiar with the 203K process, it's going to go much smoother. Um, but there is no self-help allowed on these programs. Do you need to know who these contractors are up front? We do. Typically, we like to have a contractor actually go into the property with the consumer before they go under contract, if possible. But ideally, we want that contractor chosen within about seven to, ten, seven to ten days after they're under contract, just to make sure we stay on track with contract closing dates and things. Well, and again, and that's a great point, Odd, because then it helps in negotiations of what they could pay for the property based on the renovations and what the market will bring to that property after the repairs are done. So, I mean, it, it, it's probably the best way, best practice that I know of to, to, you know, do these type of loans that, you know, you and I have been covering for, you know, seven years that we've been together. Um, so I, what types of repairs and renovations can and cannot be included? In, uh, can you tell our listeners? Sure, absolutely. So the main thing uh, that uh, we want to focus on is 
health and safety issues. So anything that needs to be done to bring the property up to minimum standards is going to have to be included in the project. And then on top of that, we're looking at more of your desired and your wish list items. So um, what a lot of people will do, come in, they'll redo their kitchens, um, they'll redo their baths, uh, new flooring, new windows, that sort of thing. Um, but the other things that can be included that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually take a single-family unit and turn it into a multi-unit property or vice versa. So those things can be done. Um, if you need to do new roof tear-offs, things like that, all that is acceptable under the programs. Um, things that can't be done under the FHA product are luxury items. So no putting in an in-ground swimming pool. Unfortunately, guys, no outdoor fireplaces, that sort of thing. However, oh, if that on. is something... I was going to put the fireplace in the pool. <laughs> there you go. You would, Kenny. <laughs> we'll get a floater. <laughs> there you go. If it is something that you want to do, there is actually a conventional loan product that can accommodate that. So um, that's something that we can look into. But on the FHA side, uh, no luxury items. And there's really uh, not a lot of difference in, in the, pr- the way we would process that type of situation, whether it be uh, our conventional uh, renovation project or, or FHA. Is that correct? That, that, that's correct. And, and with regard to um, property type, we can do it on a one to four unit building. Uh, the only property types you can't do under the renovation loans, there's no condos and no manufactured homes. Do you have to live, do you have to be, as an owner, do you have to be the one living in the, one of the four units? Uh, on the FHA product, yes, yes. If you do the conventional home style renovation, um, we can go up to a two unit on that, and it can be done as an investment property as well. So you investors out there, I, I hope you caught that. So you can do a renovation loan on a potential pr- uh, prospect of property, uh, one to two units, and uh, get your renovations done, and then you put your happy tenants in there for uh, a great investment opportunity. All right, Ray, what do you got? Well, Andra, you know, in comparison to your traditional conventional loan, are there any additional costs and time associated with doing the renovation loan? That's an excellent question. So what the, the consumer should plan on is whatever the cost of the repairs are, plan on about 20 to 25% of that on top of that is going to be built into your total renovation cost. Now, that might seem like a lot, so in a $20,000 project, plan on your total cost of renovation around 25000 But out-of-pocket, the only out-of-pocket additional cost to the consumer is going to be for the HUD consultant, um, which is required, and they're going to charge you probably anywhere between five and 1500 depending on the scope of the project. But other than that, any other additional fees, your contingency reserves, permits, reinspection fees, all of that actually rolled into the loan amount and built into your mortgage payment. Now, are the payments to the contractors done in a, um, in a closing set of, set, a setting like as if it was a construction loan? You know, it, it, it depends on the product. So if, you, if we were to do an FHA 203K limited product for you, that's really just cosmetic in nature, under $35,000 in repairs, the contractor is going to get half at closing, and then he'll get half once the project is done. If it's a full-blown 203K where we're, you know, doing structural repairs, we're looking at fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in renovation, then there's a draw process. Uh, so the contract does not receive any money at closing. They do receive um, draws up, up to five, depending on the, the scope of the project. So the, the initial one, the 35000 that's also called our Streamline, correct? The, yeah, Streamline Limited, those, yeah, interchangeable. Okay, and so the listeners understand the difference between the two are one's going to, you know, we, if there's a structural, even if it's a $5,000 repair in your foundation, it's cracked, or, uh, you know, you're moving a bearing wall to do something uh, with your remodeling of a kitchen, that would fall under the full 203K, is that correct? That's correct. And for, for the consumer's point of view, the, the cost, there's not going to be necessarily a additional cost depending on the program that you go in. We, as the lender, are going to determine, based on the scope of the project, which loan program it falls in. Um, but from the consumer side, there's really no difference. The contractor is the one that's going to see a difference if we're doing the limited or we're doing a full. Audra, are these... Uh residential loans or could they also apply to commercial property uh it's strictly residential yeah we're strictly a residential uh, lender at caliber home loans 
Uh, one other question for you. Um, what are the keys to a successful transaction? The, excellent, excellent question. So the main thing I'm going to tell uh, consumers out there, Timmy, you can attest to this because we've been doing them together for quite a while, get yourself a reputable contractor right from the get-go. The contractor is going to basically make or break your deal. You're, you're, we're either going to fly through the process or we're going to run into hurdles depending on how responsive and how reputable your contractor is. So that, that I would say would be key. Um, the other thing, you want to make sure you've got an experienced realtor. You know, you've got Kenny walking you through properties. He's also going to be an expert to be able to tell you, you know, what, what is the potential. You know, kind of shift your mindset when you're going through a property and look at what the, what the potential is. So your realtor is going to be a key player in that. And then um, as a consumer, kind of an idea of what you want. You know, one thing to think about um, that a lot of uh, home buyers don't is, if the property is safe and sound, you might want to just get in the property in the normal 30-day time frame, sit on it for six months or so, get an idea of what you really want to do with the property, and then we do a renovation loan as a refinance. So you can use it as a purchase or a refinance. That's a great and point. It, I'm, we're actually doing one like that uh, you know, as we speak, so that, that's a great point. Right. So, sometimes seller don't want, sellers don't want to wait 60 days to actually close on a property. So this you get in in your normal 30 days, and then we worry about doing a refinance once you actually know what you want to do. And then I would say finally, the most important probably would be make sure you're working with a trusted lender who understands the process and who can get it done for you. You know, start with your lender, make sure you're going to be pre-approved. And then work with a lender who understands the uh, the renovation process. All great points, and I, I want to bring this up to our listeners. And, and there's realtors out there listening, and um, some some of them are a, a little scared off by this uh, you know whole process. And we want to let you know that if you're working with professionals that do this uh, on a regular basis, as as you know Audra does, and our team over at Caliber Home does. You're really, uh, it, it's kind of a seamless, it's, it's a little bit more paperwork, but uh, it actually, in the end, the people are so happy that they're coming into a property that is theirs, the way they want it. And um, it, it, there's a lot to be said for that. Um, and, and rather than go out and, like you said earlier in the segment, uh, you know, charge up your credit cards, go take a second lien out. You don't need to do those things. Let's do it all at once. Get you a nice low interest rate and, and keep moving along um, is what I would recommend. Uh, do you have anything to add, uh, Audra? No, I think we, we pretty much covered it. Again, just, you know, as a consumer, just keep your, keep your mind open and your eyes open when you're looking at properties and, you know, to see the potential that's there and, you know, call us, ask, ask questions, find out what you're actually going to be able to, to buy and what you're going to be able to be approved for, and uh, we'll lead you in the right direction. Okay, and for you uh, listeners out there, you brokers, you real estate uh, brokers and realtors out there, we're putting together a renovation um, uh, gathering August 3rd. You can check, uh, check me out on Cren, www.cren.biz. Uh, I'll get you Audra's information. We'll be doing it in, uh, at the Gatos in Oak Lawn. Uh, Orland Park, too. Or, Orland, Orland Park. Park. Yep, Orland Park. Thank you, Kenny. And uh, sometimes I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a great event. We're going to give uh, we're going to have a, one of our reputable contractors that does a lot of work and he's, he specializes in this. Uh, all in one is going to give his presentation as to how – uh, he can do the design and uh, rebuild for you all in one. Um, uh, and, and you know what? Uh, I just think it's going to be a really informative uh, event for us. August 3rd, mark your calendars, 6 to 8 at Gatto's at Orland Park. Hope to see you there. Hey, Audra, thanks for joining us. Once again, it's Audra Iori from Caliber Home Loans. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon, Audra. Thanks for uh, for coming in. All right. Sounds good, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, great Audie. That's a great, I mean, that's something awesome, man. You know, if you look at the uh, the products that we have with, you know, talking with Tommy Brennan from All in One, um, put that together with her, use some of the other people in our network, absolutely that's the way to go, Timmy. Yeah, and you know what? They don't necessarily have to use their, our network, but we, we would recommend it because, you know what, we've already did the scrubbing of the people that are on this network. 
And, uh, you know, as I say, reputation's everything to all of us. And uh, as long as you're working with people that really care and, and care about their re- reputation, I mean, accumulatively, we, like, like we discussed, we have over 100 years' experience in this room alone. Uh, and, and, you know. And Ray, looks, Ray, Ray looks like he's had most of it, don't you think? <laughs> hey, you he's still got most of his hair. It's just in comedy hour, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, why did you bring up the beauty shop thing earlier? Why is there always a beauty shop when, you're, when you guys are looking at me? I don't know. But we'll talk about that when we come back <laughs> yeah. from. Break. Face for radio. Play hey, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a break right now. Uh, thanks to Caliber Home Owners for the sponsor that. Thanks for Audrey Ori from Caliber Homes being on. Coming up, we're gonna be talking with Tim Kierfin from uh, Kierfin Home Inspections. You're listening to Chicago Real Estate Beat, brought to you by DeAndre and Associates. Listen on 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk and Sports. We'll be right back. Gray Lake Insurance Agency is an independent insurance agency representing several companies in auto, home, commercial, and workers' comp insurance. The cornerstone of our agency is our ability to tailor-make policies and provide insurance choices with top-rated insurance companies. The Gray Lake Insurance Agency is your one-stop resource for all of your insurance needs. We put you first and work within your budget. Contact us today at 773-284-7650, graylakeagency.com. The Joliet Will County area has a long history of tornadoes. From Plainfield to Coal City to Crest Hill, we've been through it all. For over 90 years, WJOL has been the area's place to turn for coverage of severe weather. Watches, warnings, the aftermath. Stay connected with the changing weather here in the Joliet area on 1340 WJOL and on our new WJOL app, on our WJOL Facebook page, and on Twitter at WJOL. This is the Chicago Real Estate Beat on 1340 WJOL. Welcome back, everybody. Ken Hobbelt along with Ray Graylick and Timmy Yanahan. The Chicago Real Estate Beat brought to you by the County Firm of DeAndre and Associates. This segment is brought to you by the Chicago Real Estate Network, and you can find them at on the website at www.cren.biz. We're joined by Timmy Kierfin from Kierfin Home Inspections. Timmy, what's happening, partner? Hey, Ken. How are you, ma'am? Hey, Timmy. Hey, Timmy. I'm out working. <laughs> well, listen, we worked together yesterday. You did a nice job for an inspection on a townhome that we had over in uh, Orland Park. Thank you for helping us out on that, too. Before we yeah, get started, why, I know you, everybody knows that you have a show here on here, too, but just for our listeners that are following us, why don't you tell us a little bit about Tim Kierford and how you got in the inspection game and whatnot? Well, you know, my background is um, <clears throat> I'm a, lic- a licensed electrician. I still carry a license, but electrical is my background, and probably... I want to say 18 years ago, a company I worked for sold to ComEd, went to work for ComEd for almost two years, and got in the home inspection business. Um, and I'd say between then and now, I'm, I believe I'm well over 9,000 inspections performed. So that's, how, that's, my, that's my, uh, my intricate story. So I'm still going strong and uh, still love it. Good stuff, Timmy. Hey, we just got off of a, a, a segment with the renovation loans. So when you do a, uh, a home inspection, uh, you could basically tell a customer when they're looking at it, hey, uh, you know, your roof is, uh, you know, not going to last more than maybe a, a couple months. So you got this and that. Instead of those people canceling the transaction, a renovation loan might fit just perfect for that type of situation. What do you think? <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, you know, especially with, especially with roofs and you know, like plumbing issues. Sure. You know, here's the thing with roofs. You know, even when a roof is bad, it still can last a short time. You can go up there and make a makeshift repair with tar or whatever. Um, but um, I mean, there's anything along. But uh, with a renovation repair, um, yeah, replace the roof. And you know, roofs are kind of a scary thing for people. Um, and I think a lot of times when it comes to price, it's probably not as bad as you think. Tim, walk us through. So, Tim, walk us through a basic home inspection. What is it that you're looking for, and how do you perform it? Well, you know, as soon as I pull up to that house, well, first of all, I look on the internet first to see what the house is. So I got a good idea what the house is going to look like before I pull up. But when I pull up, I immediately start reading the house: you know, the soffit, fascia, uh, the roof, plumbing vents, windows, walks. Uh, anything, anything that might be, um, uh, let's say, not normal. You know, the, the walks up, you know, f- uh, pitch towards the house, they have flame problems. Then I'll go in, and then, you know, after I meet the customer, I'll go in the house, get their information, and I generally like work from the top to the bottom. And I check everything. 
So the reason why I like to go from the top to the bottom, because if there's a leak or something, by the time you're out the inspection, it's going to be in the basement, right? So, and I do like taking the homeowner or the, the home, the potential buyer um, around the house to show them defects and what it might cost, things like that. And that helps a lot. So basically, I work to the right of the house, start from the top, bottom, and I produce a report generally that night or the next day, and, and I take photos. And Timmy, we, we know you do a great job, as we've done many together with, with, with everybody in the network here. So, But I wanted to yeah. also point out that you show a lot of things that are, are, that, that are wrong that may, that may have to go to talk to with Kevin, the attorney, or, or whatnot, too. So, But also, yeah. it's also important to know that maybe an outlet doesn't work. So when you go to plug it in, you say, oh, yeah, I can go, I can go to that report that, that Kierfin Home Inspections gave me that I can know that was wrong with it. So that's an excellent tool. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about yeah. the report. Well, as far as the report goes, you know, and uh, as far as, you know, I list all the, I itemize all those defects or issues. You know, a lot of them are simple things, you know, that I could take five seconds to repair. But, you know, what, guys, it's my house, so I can't just turn a screwdriver or a loose outlet plate, you know. Um, so all, the, all those things get itemized on the report. And it depends on how, you know, what the level is, uh, if I think it warrants a photo or not. I'm definitely not going to take a picture of a cracked outlet cover. You know, it's, it's not, you know, it's a small item. But something significant like a heat exchanger crack or, um, or uh, you, you know, there's moisture damage or mold or things like that, absolutely do take pictures of that. So, and generally, um, um, you know, once the, once the client gets the, gets the inspection report, if there's any questions or the attorney like Kevin has any questions, they usually call me direct and, and, uh, and take it from there. You know, Tim, on your website, you talk about using the latest technology like drones and uh, thermal imaging. Uh, how do you utilize these tools? And uh, kind of sounds like a little bit of an episode from CSI. Well, I'll tell you what. As far as uh, as far as as far as roofs go, I don't care who you are, or what age you are. Not everybody can get on a roof. Um, like some of those old Victorians, or you know, I, I, I did an inspection at a church. Hey, I can't crawl up on a steeple. So I'll use uh, I'll use a drone to take photos and. Um, uh, and get all get all the get all the information that I need, and it's fantastic. So, um, and as far as uh, technology, I, I, we we do thermal imaging. So for example, if you see a water leak on the wall, customer wants to know if that's active or not. And any leak, I feel it feels feels wet to me. But I, I, we use thermal imaging, and we could tell in about two or three seconds flat if that if there's a leak not in the wall. Also, what's nice about that, um, I've seen everything from a dead raccoon in a wall with thermal gene to uh, moisture leaks in the basement to insulation missing. So those are great tools to use. But the bottom line, guys, it's, it's the inspector, the bottom line. Did you ever come across in the, in, with your inspection a bag of money in a wall? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I got a funny story about that. <clears throat> we know so you I, did. I, I was, yeah, I was testing a world from Maryland Park, you know, and um, and the guy was the owner was downstairs, and I was taking the access panel off to the whirlpool, you know, check the motor in the in the GFI to make sure there's no leaks under there. This guy comes running up there, bolts up there. As soon as I open the panel, boom, he swipes in there and grabs a bag of cash out of there. So, <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah. Pretty funny. You found his hiding spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, hey, it, was, yeah it was good. It was a good hiding spot. Hey, Timmy, what about new in, new houses? I often talk about earlier in my career, like. 20, 25 years ago, one of the first houses I sold was new construction, and we went out and we uh, I, I encouraged the buyer to do a home inspection, and and so we found that the garage wall wasn't insulated on there too. Maybe talk about why you should do. Even if you have new construction, you think it's a perfect house, but yet uh, you know contractors do make mistakes. Well, you know, here's the funny thing about new construction: everybody thinks, "Oh, it's new; it's going to be perfect." No, that's that that's where the defects are. You're not in a house that someone's been living there 20 years that that's been through the issues with the sewer line clogging or a roof leak clogging or finding that roof leak, um, you know, that they had 10 different roofs out there, 10 different roofers out there trying to find. So house, new houses have defects, and you got to kind of tweak them out, and sometimes it takes takes a year or two. That's why most most uh, seller, most uh, uh, people have a one-year warranty from the uh, builder. So uh, the other thing with the whole construction is the house is supposed to be perfect, right? So that's where the, the cabinets should line up. You know, you should have any squeaks in the floor. Plumbing should be working properly, no scratches. And you know what, guys? I tell people this all the time, and most people don't know this, but NICOR, the gas company, has sewer line insurance. Especially with new homes, <clears throat> the sewer line cracks off right where it exits the foundation. 
very common with new homes, first year or two. Um, so comment, uh, NECOR, rather, will, will cover any sewer defects from the house to the street, and I think they'll cover you up to like $8,000. But, you know, most people don't know that, so that's why you, you hire people like you, me, to, to, to give that information, and uh, especially with new houses, to make sure people are aware of that. So conversely, with uh, the reno- we were talking about renovation. You know, my daughter, uh, we were on a, uh, as a team on the purchase of her home, and it was a renovated house. And there were some odds and ends. You know, uh, the crew probably had pulled uh, to another property, and they didn't finish some odds and ends. So the, the inspection definitely showed that. And so listeners out there, uh, your new construction, uh, your renovation, and in my opinion, any property you spend – thousands and tens of thousands of dollars and sometimes hundreds of thousands should always have a home inspection always you know another thing too you know professionals know that like i do a lot of work for architects and um guys in the construction field house builder home builders um architects engineers they professionals know they not to inspect your own house and they have an inspection so you you know even the professionals in the business know they have an inspection Hey, Tim, you know, earlier you talked a little bit about water damage and thermal imaging and finding water in walls and stuff like that. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about mold and mold remediation. Can you tell our listeners what type of mold needs to be removed and what type of remediation process is involved in that? Well, let's talk about the attic for a second. So I go in the attic, look at the attic ceiling, the rafters, look down on the rafter tails, and it's black. Or you have white dots or green dots. Well, that's mold. So 99% of the time, the reason why that mold was caused, what caused that mold is poor ventilation at the attics. And a lot of time, the soffit vents outside are clogged up, and there's no air in the attic, so therefore you get mold. So what do you do? You sanitize the uh, mold. There's a couple different products, like microband you can use, and then you encapsulate it with, like, a mold-resistant paint. And then, of course, you want to uh, improve the ventilation at key. So with uh, and it's pretty straightforward. It's not you know in, in my opinion, mold in an attic is not a deal breaker. You treat it, improve the ventilation, and you're, you're you should be good uh, for at least ten years um, as far as that kind of mold growth. And if it's properly ventilated, you should be good forever. You know, a really good tip, you guys, if someone's concerned that they have poor ventilation in the attic, wait till the winter time, and when it's like really cold out, zero or below zero, go in your attic. If you frost on your ceiling. Or you see frost on the nails, you know, coming through the, from the from the shingles. You have poor ventilation. And you may have mold. So um, I tell people to do that all the time. You know, Tim, you're talking as about... far as. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm talking, you know, and also too is if you have mold in the basement, um, you know, generally that's a pretty straightforward uh, remediation process. You cut four feet of the drywall off, get rid of it, and you're you're most of the time you're good to go. So is there an opportunity, like, you know, for someone, if they find mold in, say, an interior wall, say, in a first floor, uh, would that mm-hmm. indicate that there's possibly water coming from someplace else and then it's a little bit bigger of a project? Yeah, it, it, that, that, that definitely could be. If you're seeing, if you're seeing moisture, uh, if you're seeing mold on the first floor or on the top floor, you know, on the drywall, I'm not talking about in closets. A lot of times closets aren't ventilated. Someone will shove a suitcase on the wall and, you know, moisture will get trapped between the drywall and the suitcase you get mold. That, that's kind of like a housekeeping thing. But if you're getting mold uh, on the interior wall, something else is going on. You know, a lot of times, it's, it, sometimes it's as simple as they have the humidifier too high, you know. Um, so I, I see that often. Hey, Timmy, thanks a lot, man. We're running out of time. You, you, you know how it goes in the radio gig, man. We only get so much time here. But thanks yeah, a lot. It's Timmy Kierfin from Kierfin Home Inspections. We're going to be talking to you soon. Hey, before we go, I just want to let everybody know to check out our website, Chicago Real Estate, Chicago Land Real Estate Network at CREN.biz. So whether you're trying to get a hold of Timmy Yanahan from Caliber Home Loans, Kevin Berry from the Berry Law, or Ray Graylick from Graylick Insurance, or myself, Ken Hobbelt from Hobbelt Real Estate, check us out on the, on the web, CREN.biz. We'll be happy to uh, contact us or any members of the network to help you out, with it, whatever it might be. We are here to help. We're here to make Will County a better place. You've been, we want to thank DeAndre and Associates, Chicago Title, Caliber Home Loans, and Chicago Land Real Estate Network for sponsoring our show today. So for we're out for now. So thanks for listening to Chicago Real Estate Beat on 1340 WJOL, Will County's News Talk and Sports. Thanks. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a good week.